And hey everyone, welcome to another episode of That Trans Geek Girl, and I am Christina Talley, host of That Trans Geek Girl, and today I have a special host, he is the host of, of Star Wars Canon Library, and also War of the Stars, and Breaking the Fourth Wall, introducing Brian Miller. Hey, how's it going everybody? And the reason why I have Brian Miller with me today is because we're talking about Canon today. Not just normal mm -hmm. Canon, however. We are talking about what we what I'm now terming as axil, uh, accidental canon. Mm -hmm. What that means is, so a lot of times we have directors, producers, things of those nature, and they want to put like their own little throwbacks to, you know, series or other things like that in their in their movies to make them to you know it's like a little homage. However, it backfires, and now they should now everything becomes linked. Mm -hmm. So we have, you know, there are quite a lot of, this happens quite a few times. There are some shows we are going to talk about today about that. The big one, same in that Brian is the keeper of canon for Star Wars, for the Star, for Star Wars canon library unofficially. He might have be after Pablo's job one day. We'll see. <laughs> is, after yesterday, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> yes, he has some great news. Yes, you want to tell everyone about that? Uh, sure, yeah, might as well. Um, I was at work yesterday, and uh, I've been doing the, the Canon Library for almost two years. Next month will be two years. And uh, I've, I've poured thousands of dollars into all this stuff and I mean, just countless hours working on the website and the Facebook page and everything. And it, I mean, me and Kirsty have gotten into fights over this stuff before because of it. It's crazy. And um, yesterday, everything that we've gone through was made completely worth it. Uh, I got an email from my website, www.starwarscanonlibrary.com, from Pablo uh, Hidalgo himself, uh, pretty much complimenting the website and saying uh, to keep up the good work, and there might possibly be a job at Lucasfilm on the story group for me someday. So, uh, yeah, that I mean, that made my... I mean, that made everything over the last two years completely worth it. I'm, I've been over the moon for the last, like, 36 hours. I can't contain myself, <laughs> so... So, uh, but yeah, anyway, that's, that is, it's freaking awesome. It's really, really cool to get some recognition like that. I'm sh I, I'm sure it is. And just congratulations as well. Thank you. Thank you. So the first movie we're going to talk about is Star Wars, which actually pops up in a lot of different movies in one reference to another. But the one mm -hmm. I want to talk about first is the E.T. crossover. Mm -hmm. so, episode one episode one as well as e the movie et was the mm -hmm. first one if you remember there was a scene where they had et dressed as a ghost they had a sheet over his head and eye holes cut out and he sees yoda and you can tell that he recognizes yoda ah, ah! <laughs> exactly yeah yeah which okay that once again was a homage we all know steven spielberg and lucas both has their own, you know, our friends. So this is something they've done quite a bit throughout their movies. Right. So there is, so there was that, but then we have episode one, as just Brian just said, where the, during the Senate scene, they had a whole little crew of ETs sewn in there. So Brian, you want to talk about that? Okay, the scene uh, Christina's talking about is actually immediately after uh, Queen Amidala says, I move for a vote of no confidence in Chancellor Valorum's leadership. And it starts cutting all these different pods with different aliens. And down in the bottom left corner of the last shot, the one with the Wookiees screaming in the background, you hear that? Down in the bottom corner, there's a pod with three little ETs, hearts just to glow, and they're going, eh, the whole time. I, it's, I never noticed it. When I was a kid, I didn't notice it until like three or four years ago that that he was in episode one, that there were three of them in episode one. It, it never dawned on me. So, I mean, the I mean, like you said, that's accidental canon. Um, technically, in like a loophole, accidental kind of way, Earth is now Star Wars canon. And, well, what else was uh, was connected to that? I don't remember. There was something else, too, and I don't remember what it was. Oh, crap. I'll come back to it. I'll, probably, I'll, I'll think about it after we stop recording because that's usually how my brain works. But anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, that makes Earth now Star Wars canon. And, but, I mean, not to the point where I'm going to put E.T. on that shelf. But 
You, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's kind of cool. It's like what you said with E.T. recognizing a kid dressed as Yoda. And, ah, you know? I, I think it's awesome. Well, it's also, there's more that brings us Earth into Star Wars canon as well. Let's not forget mm-hmm. Raiders of the Lost Ark. The engraving yeah. of C-3PO and R2-D2. Yep. On the, uh, that, uh, on the, um... In the room where the Ark of the Covenant was. Yes. When he first finds it on the wall, you see you can see 3PO and R2. Yep. So once there too, so maybe they visited in a year, like thousands of years ago, thus why they have an engraving. They were looked at as gods maybe. Who knows? What's your thoughts? I Honestly, I think it was just a fun little cameo. Didn't think anybody would pick up on it. Obviously, they don't know Star Wars fans very well because we spot R2 a mile away. You know what I mean? Like, but I, I think it's cool. I really do. And it, it kind of reminds me of, because we're talking Indiana Jones, it kind of reminds me that um, back before the Canon White, God, I was a kid when this happened, but there was a comic that came out, and it was an Indiana Jones comic. And he had Short Round with him, and they found this crash spaceship that had been there for like thousands of years. Well, maybe it wasn't that, uh, No, it could have been thousands of years. But anyway, I'll tell you why in a sec. But they find this crashed spaceship, looked like a saucer. And they get on board it, and they find a skeleton of somebody sitting in the cockpits, in the cockpit chair, with an arrow in his chest. So whoever was there, you know, got shot with an arrow and died. But he was wearing Han Solo's clothing, and Indiana Jones found him and was like, "Oh, this poor guy, you know, got taken out by an arrow." He's like, "I wonder what did that to him. I wonder if the creature's still around." And it cuts to a shot outside the ship, and Chewbacca is like hunched down in a tree watching the ship, like guarding it. But it was it was really cool, like doing a crossover kind of thing like that, you know, and. It, it kind of goes along with what you're saying. Accidental. I mean, not it wasn't really accidental, but um, technically, that made Indiana Jones and the EU canon, Star Wars canon. Technically, a well, one of the levels of canon, one of the many levels of canon. You know, but but yeah. Anyway, I I I love it. I I think they're fun little cameos, and I don't know if we should read too far into them, but. It's kind of fun to spot stuff like that once in a while. Oh, it definitely is, and but it does, like I said, unfortunately, it does bring kind of black holes and loopholes into the into the canon universes. And the last one for Star Wars I'm thinking of right now is mm-hmm. Close Encounters of the Third Kind, which was the R two mm-hmm. unit, which was mounted to the the space the alien spaceship when it right. arrives. Right. So, once again, it's one of those things that everything is kind of mixed in and mixed in everything else. Mm-hmm. I know well, there was also there was also the, um, I know, uh, the, in which Star Trek, I think it was the first Star Trek reboot um, with the new cast. There was an R2 cameo in that also. And when all the ships are getting blown up around Vulcan, you can see R2 fly by in the debris past the Enterprise. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay, that one I didn't know you about. To, you have to zoom in really far and like do it frame by frame, but you can sure enough see R2. I mean, his eyes lit up and everything. You can see R2 floating by. So it's kind of like how the uh, like the potato and the uh, sneaker in episode five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. For those who yeah. don't know, during uh, the one scene where the Falcon is escaping through the asteroid field and is about to swoop into the cave, there's a scene where there's an asteroid, a couple asteroids, and one of them is actually an old gym sneaker, and another one is a potato. Yep. So I don't know what that was about. I'm sure there's some inside joke about it, but yeah. Giant space potatoes are canon now. Yes, gi- giant space yes. potatoes and floating space sneakers are canon. Yes. <laughs> you know, and uh, who was it that asked me about this? I don't remember... Somebody asked me, I mean, I think it was Mario, actually, was asking me if I had seen that uh, they had been talking about putting Darth Vader in Guardians of the Galaxy as, like, a little cameo. I've heard about that. That would have pissed me off beyond no, no boundary. I mean, I would have been lividly pissed, because then that would have made the entire MCU Star Wars canon. And your work, your job would have got 20 times harder. I would have had it add another twenty movies to that damn show, you know, <laughs> like, like that. No, it just no. Yeah, some they did definitely need to keep some universes separate. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's a MCU is a huge universe. We don't need to be adding the Star Wars universe in with it because now it just will get extremely confusing, extremely quick. Mm. 
So let's move on to some other movies that there are maybe not as accidental. This one may not be as accidental, but this was in the nineties. There was a movie that came out, Spy Kids, mm-hmm. um, uh, directed by Robert Rodriguez. Later on, he went to go direct a movie called Machete, star Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo was also in Spy Kids, and it's already been revealed that Machete is the same character. The uncle and Machete are the same character. <laughs> as crazy as that is, like, so the gadget building uncle in Spy Kids is the same guy who, like, literally got somebody's throat just for looking at him wrong. It's literally the same character. It's the same character. It's Uncle Machete. Oh, my God. Like, oh my god. So what are your thoughts on that one? Um, it's been 15, almost 20 years since I've watched Spy Kids. But, uh, that I, man, I don't know about that one. That one's a little... That's a little much. That's that's a little too much. Yeah, that, that one's, you're kind of stretching for that one, you know? I mean, do you really want to link Machete to Spy Kids? Like... That's the same universe. I mean, okay, with the new Machete movie coming out, I guess it's going to be Machete in space. So the Machete movies don't take themselves seriously at all. No, they you don't. You know, they, they should, and they shouldn't, you know, but I guess if they're going to space and Machete, why not have nieces and nephews that are spies? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, just go as over the top as you can physically go. That's pretty go much it. it. I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that one's just, I mean, my opinion on it, it's a, it is a stretch. I mean, even though it was Rodriguez who said, yes, this is the case, it's still, it's like, why? Yeah. Like, you just really have to ask why. I mean, we're talking about Spy Kids, which is obviously made for preteen, teenage kids. And then you have mm-hmm. Machete, which is a grindhouse classic right now. Mm-hmm. Two completely different movies compl- should be completely different universes and should not be joined at in any shape or form, but unfortunately now are because the director said so. And yeah. no, it shouldn't be that way. Agreed. See, and what I'm saving for the last is my favorite one. But the next one I'm going to talk <laughs> about, this one's small, Fear and Loathe in Las Vegas, and the movie Rango. Other than the fact they both have Johnny Depp as the main character... There was mm-hmm. a very interesting scene of where you see Rango smack into a windshield of a very recognizable convertible, and the driver in the front and the person in the back were definitely... I can't remember their names. If you remember them, let me know. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't even know about this one until you told me about it earlier. <laughs> but yeah, I can't remember their names, so unfortunately, but where it's unmistakably the characters of Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. <laughs> so, which is which makes Rango, which is uh, which is another one of those like I don't think I understand why they did it. Obviously, Rango's wearing the same shirt as he as Johnny Depp did in the movie. Mm-hmm. We already knew that from seeing it, and it's right down to the hat and everything. But the fact now you just cross those universes is really kind of interesting. And right, you know, I, we're talking about a movie which is about you know pretty much a major drug trip and <laughs> yeah. a kids movie about a talking lizard. Let's call yeah. it what it is. Yeah. Yeah, I know uh, like I said, I never caught on to that one until you brought it up earlier. Like, really? What the <laughs> what the hell? Really? So Yeah. So life question, do you have any ones you you can think of right now which which would be considered accidental canon? Uh let me think for a second. Um Uh, I don't know. Keep going for a second. Okay, I'll go ahead and keep going. I'll, I'll think for a minute because right. there's got to there's got to be some other. Yeah, I mean, we also have the whole Pixar universe, which is tied tight, which always mm-hmm. has kind of throwbacks. And same thing with a lot of the Disney movies too. Now they have a lot of throwbacks to each other, right? Such as in uh, Big Hero Six, perfect example. The the prince that was trying to kill Aunt Anna. We're trying to take over the kingdom. He was on a mm-hmm. wanted poster in the back in the back thing. Not necessarily making those two universes co- like connected, but possibly because we all know that descendants can look like their predecessors. Mm-hmm. 
Well, didn't the Pizza Planet truck from Toy Story show up in another Pixar movie? It shows up in quite a few of them. It showed up in Does Monsters. It? it actually showed up in Monsters Inc. at the end scene with um, <laughs> it was parked in front of that trailer. It showed up in a couple of other ones too. Mm-hmm. So yeah, mm-hmm. there's a lot where they've been intermingling, and Pixar is very well known for it, thus making their entire universe connected. Yeah, through like little throwbacks to the other movies. Mm-hmm. Which is quite even on car, even even cars, they've done it at this point. So it's they've Mm-mm. thrown little tidbits in. <laughs> yeah. right, have you thought of anything yet, or I I can't I, not off the top of my head, nothing that really stood out to me. Um, I really can't think of anything really. Um, no, I really I really can't at this point to be honest. Um, wait, I just. No, you know what? I did just have one. Okay. It's it's mainly it's mainly in comic books though, because I mean I catch it in comics more than I do movies. Well, I catch what I mean, they, that counts too. I mean, it's still right. They've they've crossed uh, Doctor Who and Star Trek before, and they've crossed uh, Green Lantern with Doctor Who, Green Lantern with Star Trek. I mean they've I mean they've keep crossing these over, which technically I guess if okay, so that means. Through E.T., okay, we're going to connect everything right now. Okay, so through E.T., Star Wars and E.T. are related, right? So that means Star Trek, if that happens, or no, I mean Star Wars and E.T., if Star Trek happens in our future, and hell, we don't have to do that. We've had R2 in Star Trek before, so that connects Star Trek and Star Wars into the same universe. So then... If you have Doctor Who crossover with Star Trek, that means Doctor Who is in the Star Wars universe. And then if you've had Green Lantern mix over with Doctor Who, that means Green Lantern and the entire Justice League is now Star Wars canon. Like, everything DC has ever done is now Star Wars canon. But then we also... was. <laughs> talking about DC as well, there was another one I almost forgot about, actually, and that was the accidental canon between Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles... And Daredevil. Yeah, that's true. I forgot about that one. Which right. was the original. It was actually done through a copyright loophole, which connected both mm-hmm. of them. If we all remember, Murdoch got his powers after a truck full of toxic waste, lost control, and a canister hit him, blinding him, but them gifting him powers. However, how the Turtles now got their powers was that through the same accident and while this happened another this either the same canister or another canister hit a child that had a glass jar of turtles mm-hmm. and even splinter is kind of a homage to stick who was matt murdoch's trainer mm-hmm. right. so it's kind of a very interesting little uh crossover there too that they both kind of spawned from the same accident yeah well, they're getting ready to come out with... Okay, well, here we go. If the whole Justice League thing is canon with Star Wars... I kid you not, I saw that this is the honest to God's truth. They're going to do a Batman vs. Elmer Fudd comic book. I'm not kidding. They're actually doing one. I, I, I too, was shocked. So, that means when that happens, Looney Tunes, everything in the Looney Tunes universe, Space Jam included, is Star Wars canon. Which makes Michael Jordan this, canon like, is... Round of, yeah, which now like makes Michael Jordan canon play. in Star Wars. If you think about it, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. See, so, I mean, we could keep going and going and going. And yeah, connecting. eventually everything would be connected. Everything, you know. I mean, I mean, the most interesting one they I've seen is the Tarantino universe. How there's two worlds within a Tarantino universe. You have the real world, which encompasses things like Pulp Fiction. Um, mm-hmm. Reservoir Dogs, but then you have the movie world, which was stuff like from Dust Till Dawn. Kill Bill. Kill Bill, yeah. exactly. Like yeah. the more. So, in other words, the people from the Tarantino real world would go mm-hmm. see movies and they would see Kill Bill or they would see From Dust Till Dawn, which mm-hmm. is really kind of. Because even Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction is connected through the Vega Brothers. Because mm-hmm. you had Vic and Vincent. Vincent was in Pulp Fiction. Vic was in Reservoir Dogs as Mr. Blonde. Right. So those who remember that. Yeah. So it's it's a very interesting way to do it. It can get very confusing very quickly, though. Like, well, there was even there was even a little mention in um, 
what was it, Captain America? Well, I think it was Winter Soldier. Was that the one where Nick Fury faked his death? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, after the car okay. was attacked. Yeah, on his headstone, on Nick Fury's headstone, it says "The Path of the Righteous Man," and it's the the Bible verse from Pulp Fiction that he that he. Uh, That's right. That he. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He would say before he would kill someone. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Oh, he but, would yeah, recite. That, yeah. Yeah, recite. That's the word I was looking for. Jeez, what the man? I'm, mm. anyway. It's okay. It happens yeah. to all of us. Yeah, but nice little cameos. I love crap like that. I really do. Yeah, it really makes a movie interesting, though, when they, when they do try to throw a little bit something to, you know, the people they look up to and respect, or the movie franchises they look up and to respect to. But like I said, unfortunately, sometimes it turns, it can kind of backfire, and then all of a sudden, the world gets thrust. You know, their worlds get thrust into the other worlds, like the last one, which I was going to bring up. Mm -hmm. Which is, we know Blade Runner and Aliens is, you know, those have already been documented as being in the same universe. You know, Mr. Wayland, his letter to his letter to his mentor, a letter from Mr. Wayland found on the Prometheus DVDs that, you know, talk about his mentor in robotics, who obviously he was talking about Blade Runner. However, what Mm -hmm. a lot of people don't realize is Joss Whedon, who incidentally did direct Alien Resurrection, completely, probably accidentally immersed his whole Firefly series into the same universe. Now, how did he do this, you may ask? This is something I didn't notice till... The amount of times I've seen Firefly, I didn't notice it till recently. That there's... (laughs) I'm dead serious, I didn't notice. But in the pilot episode, I'll explain the whole scene. In the pilot episode... And I even have a screenshot of this, so we will be, I will be putting a screenshot up as well. So you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. This pilot episode, it's, they're showing the Battle of Serenity. It's a very major battle in the Firefly universe. That's what his ship is, based, is named after. That's why his ship is named mm-hmm. Serenity. However, the one scene, Mal is firing this turret. It's, it has a video screen turret. And the screen's showing, but up in the dead center, upper part of the screen, as we show, as you guys will see right now, because I just got the thing up, there is a Whalen yutani logo right in the upper mid. <laughs> Thus, I, and I think didn't know about, about that the one. time, yeah, and think about the time frames, the twenty like twenty five hundreds. Um, I can't remember the exact time frame it's supposed to happen right now, which I'm a really bad brown coat for this, but <laughs> but the time frame puts it ahead of when Whalen yutani would have been in business. Because mm-hmm. we have many know, by the time Alien Resurrection came around, Whalen yutani was no more. Mm-hmm. As a corporation, they pretty much fizzled out because of the problems they had. You know, obviously trying to sacrifice innocent people to gain your you know, biological weapons department has its drawbacks sometimes. So, yeah. being that they were revolutionaries, they were upstarts, so to speak, they wouldn't have the most advanced equipment on the planet they would have whatever they could scavenge so it wouldn't be out of the or it wouldn't be out of the ordinary for them to get their hands on a couple of you know a couple hundred year old you know laser cannons that were that they probably got for free or dirt cheap or salvaged that just so happened to be built by weapons developer and just everything developer at the time whaling yutani oh. Yep. So you didn't know about that one. So what's your? Th- I know mm. you like Firefly as well, and you. I know oh, you yeah. like the Alien series and mm-hmm. probably Blade Runner. So what's your yeah, feeling? Oh God, yeah. What's your feelings that all three of these universes are now connected? Um, I never put those together. Like I knew Blade Runner and Alien were connected. I knew I knew that one, and the Firefly. I'm a huge Firefly fan. Firefly fan. Kirsty actually got me into it. Um, I didn't know that. Like at all, I had no clue that 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 was connected like that. I don't have a problem with it, really. I mean, they they're all really along. Well, I don't want to say along the same lines. You could definitely see the progression of where one would lead into the other and into the into the other. You can tell that that they would all be related. So I don't have a problem with it. I I, I think it's kind of cool, actually. I need to point that out to Kirsty though. She she don't she obviously doesn't know. I mean, if I didn't know, she sure as hell didn't know. So I need to show her and see what she thinks about it. 
So yeah, it was something when I figured. Like I said, I've seen Firefly more times than I can I can even remember. Everyone who mm-hmm. knows me knows I'm a huge brown coat. Like my mm-hmm. brown coat fandom probably follows like very tightly behind my Star Wars fandom. <laughs> like very tightly. Like Star Wars first, Firefly second. Mm-hmm. Like there's my progression, and it's like literally like if there was. I mean, who knows if there was more with Firefly than one season and one movie. Who yeah. knows? I might have been more following that. I mean, I went out of my way. I actually have all the reaction figures for Firefly. Just to give you an idea of my like. Oh, I, did it? I have all five I, of them. I was able to find Kirsty. I was able to find her, Mal Reynolds. I have all five the of only... them. I was only missing oh. Mal. I had four of them, which I bought from Movie Stop when he went out of business. And I was only missing Mal. And I ordered that from Amazon. But I also yeah. have the Black Horse ships as well, which are beautiful i love black horse but getting off topic <laughs> so yeah I like how that i like how that wash figure came with the two dinosaurs though oh yeah chris your inevitable sudden your sudden but inevitable betrayal ah, i love it of course because you remember his console is even covered with dinosaurs yeah and it's funny hey, too. you, you, you want to hear a really bad joke and obviously you've probably heard this one before though okay how do <laughs> how do reavers clean their spears how? They put it through the wash. Ouch. You're you know, welcome. That's still I know that's a really bad joke. I saw that one on Facebook so long ago. And that's still too soon. <laughs> still too soon. Still too soon. Just like Alderaan. On the wind. Oh, boom. <laughs> that's pretty much what happened. Yeah. That's exactly, yeah. Come on, it was like my anyway. joke I made yesterday, just to say this one just for the record. goes, if Brian was a planet, he'd be out of Alderaan because he's about to blow up. <laughs> <laughs> this was that was still when I was freaking out about the whole Pablo Hidalgo thing. I was I was literally crying at work, losing my mind. Actually, you guys want to hear a really funny part of this story? I was actually sitting on the toilet at work when I got that news, when I saw it, and I jumped up and then had to sit right back down. <laughs> like it was oh oh <laughs> I said, I go, oh my god! And my boss was outside and he's like, what? Are you all right there? I'm like. I'm fine. I'm fine. And I like started to ball my eyes out. And he's like, "What the hell is going on in there?" I'm like, "I'm all right. I'm okay." Yeah, when well, yeah, I mean, imagine how you would feel getting one an email from the one of the biggest people in Lucasfilm, especially the, he yeah. is the Lucasfilm keeper of canon, and he yeah. actually compliments your website on how well on uh, calling it the best, mind you, the best site he's seen for canon. I yep. mean that is you couldn't you can't get a bigger compliment than that. So no, that that that's so far that's the pinnacle of what I've achieved, <laughs> of what we uh, we've achieved. That is like the pinnacle. The only right thing there. that sucks nowadays is not it's an email. It's too bad you don't get like a handwritten letter like you do back in the day. You can hang that up. Well, you can always print it out. Well, yeah. <laughs> I've got the screenshot on my phone. <laughs> I know. You Actually, s- you want me to read what it said? Sure. Hang on, let me pull it up. I don't want to make this about me, but anyway. No, it's a huge. Uh, it's a huge honor. You're, real quick, it's fine. Oh, real quick. All right. So this came through the website, uh, and it's uh, and I got the email to accompany it. But this is the message from the site, and it says, uh, "Brian just came across your website as someone whose sole job is Star Wars canon. I have to say, well done. Your timeline is the most accurate I've seen to date, and I can tell you are pouring your heart and soul into what you do." Keep up the great work, and there just may be a job for you someday around here. You never know. Yours truly, Pablo. So that's really. And then when intense. you look at the and when you look at the email, it's actually got his email address attached to it, also. So. Yeah, so it is a legit. It's not somebody messing around because honestly, when he first posted it up, I thought it was, oh, somebody's messing with him. And then I'm looking I'm like, mm-hmm. nope, that email is definitely Lucasfilm. Yeah. Like, wow. <laughs> So yeah. that's all the time we have for this show. So I'll tell you what. This is what I want you guys to do. I want you guys to any other accidental canon we might miss. There's tons of it out there. There's absolutely tons of it out there. Why don't you make mm-hmm. a comment about it? Let us know about it. Remember to like, subscribe as well. But let us know about that canon we missed. Let us know how you felt we yeah. represented. If you agree with us, whether you disagree with us, or things of those nature. Yeah. So until next time, this is Christina Talley, that trans geek girl, alongside Brian Miller of Star Wars Canon Library, and we'll see you all next week. See you guys.